Uh, my name is Jared Hyman. I'm the founder of CrowdMed. Uh, we're a venture-backed uh, Silicon Valley startup, also a YC uh, product. And what we're doing is harnessing the wisdom of crowds to solve even the world's most difficult medical cases. And uh, I'm here to tell you guys the story of CrowdMed, uh, which is actually a, a personal story. Uh, the story begins in 2003. Uh, that's a photo of me and uh, my little sister, Carly. Uh, it was taken in the summer of that year, and it was unfortunately one of the last photos taken of Carly before she got sick. Um, as you can see, she was a healthy, smiley, positive, pretty young girl. Uh, she was a rising freshman at the University of Georgia. And uh, when she began school in the fall, she started coming down with all these really strange medical symptoms. And it happened all of a sudden. And at first, it manifested itself as kind of a severe depression and anxiety, which was very unlike her because she was always a very positive, upbeat youth. And uh, shortly thereafter, it was followed by some strange hormonal symptoms, um, almost a menopause-like symptoms, like hot flashes and mood swings. And this was all very unusual, uh, of course, for an 18-year-old. So it was very perplexing what was wrong with her. And it got bad enough to where she had to drop out of school, uh, live at home with my parents. And um, she got uh, very lethargic. She would you know, sleep 14 hours a night. And she, uh, during the day, she was too tired to really work or study or do anything. Um, and this is really how we saw her for most of the next uh, three years. Uh, you can tell she put on a lot of weight. She put on about 50 pounds worth of weight just in the first few months of her illness. And um, she would sleep with water bottles in her bed because uh, she would wake up several times a night with these terrible night sweats, uh, following these nightmares. And it got, it got so bad at certain points that she insisted that my mom uh, sleep in bed with her every night, one, to comfort her after, after these nightmares, and two, because she started getting these suicidal thoughts and she wanted to make sure she wouldn't hurt herself. So it was, it was a very dark time for that three-year period. And of course, my parents were very concerned. Um, they uh, sent her to, from specialist to specialist uh, trying to find a diagnosis, trying to find out what was causing this, these strange symptoms. And over that three-year period, she saw a total of about two dozen different doctors, every kind you can imagine, um, psychologists, psychiatrists, endocrinologists, gynecologists. And um, each specialist would, would, uh, identi would identify symptoms and, and treat the symptoms as best they could but no one was really able to identify the root cause of what was going on. So eventually my mom got Carly into the NIH Clinical Center in Bethesda, Maryland, where she was seen by this top-notch interdisciplinary team of physicians. And they, uh, after uh, doing tests and, and observing her for over a week, they eventually came back and say, we have a diagnosis. Uh, it's a rare disease called FXPOI, or Fragile X-Associated Primary Ovarian Insufficiency. Um, most of you guys have probably never heard of it. Um, it affects just one in 15,000 females, and that's why her doctors hadn't heard of it either, much less seen it before. So it was a very difficult diagnosis. Um, what's fortunate is once she had the diagnosis, the treatment was pretty straightforward. Um, it's actually hormone replacement therapy. So she wears a, a estrogen patch on her hip, and somewhat miraculously, within just uh, three weeks of wearing this patch, most of her symptoms resolved, and she could move on with her life. So. This experience taught me the importance of, of knowing that name, knowing the name of what's wrong. And so many patients with rare diseases, like Carly's, they struggle to, to find that diagnosis, to find out what's the name of what's, what's wrong with them. And our system is very good at identifying common diseases and treating them, but it has a real deficiency when it comes to rare and difficult to diagnose diseases. So meanwhile, I was uh, running my last company, an online survey firm called InfoServe out of Atlanta. And I was learning all about the wisdom of crowds, which is this notion that a large group of nine experts can be much smarter than individual experts as long as there's some mechanism to properly aggregate their intelligence, their collective intelligence. And I had the idea, if crowds are so wise, um, why not get crowds to solve this very difficult problem of, of identifying a medical diagnosis, particularly for difficult to diagnose cases? And that became the inspiration behind what eventually became CrowdMed. So on CrowdMed, we have a patented prediction market mechanism. It's like a virtual stock market that we spent several years developing. And the mechanism is, is, or the prediction market, is simply a mechanism to aggregate a crowd's collective intelligence. And we'll get a crowd of, of several dozen or even several hundred people to collaborate on solving a tough case. 
And this crowd is a mix, by the way, between medical professionals and non-medical professionals. Um, because the notion of crowd wisdom is that groups of non-experts can be wiser than individual experts, we didn't want to only target doctors, although we do have doctors participating, and about a third of our crowd um, do have a medical background. And when we had this idea, we wanted to test it, of course. And uh, what better case to test it with than my sisters? Um, it was near and dear to my heart, and uh, I knew it was a tough case. So if we could solve a tough case like that, surely we could solve easier ones. Um, and also, since by this point she was already diagnosed, we could quickly see if the crowd got the right answer. So we set up a, a test case. Um, I, won't, I don't have time to go through all the technical details, but we got about 300 people to participate through this uh, three-step process that we set up. And this is the actual results of our, of our test case. And you'll see that the crowd produced the number one, or the crowd's consensus was the number one most likely correct diagnosis, fragile X-associated primary ovarian insufficiency. Um, and this is what that, we didn't seed them with any suggestions, by the way. The crowd was responsible for producing hypotheses, uh, betting the suggestions of others, and eventually betting using a point system on what they thought was the most likely correct diagnosis. So we gave them just the same information that, that her doctors had um, before she was diagnosed. And we were stunned. Um, you know, we thought it might work. We didn't know it actually would work. Um, and uh, this gave us the, the, the hope that perhaps uh, we could solve other difficult cases as well. Uh, before we launched in April, uh, we've run it, or uh, before then we ran about 20 test cases, um, all very difficult cases. And in all 20 instances, the crowd came up with at least one correct diagnosis for the patient. Um, so the bottom line is that crowds can be extremely wise, um, even wiser than the most expert individuals in the world, as long as there's the mechanism in place to aggregate their, their intelligence. Um, uh, and since launch, we've run about 70 more cases through the system. Um, it's up and running. You can visit it at crowdmed.com and get a better feel for kind of how the mechanism works. Um, but today I just want to talk more about the story behind it. Um, the story does have a happy ending. Uh, my sister went back to school. She uh, completed her undergraduate degree after a three-year hiatus. Um, she then got her uh, master's degree in occupational therapy, which she now practices in Denver. And this photo was from her wedding. <laughs> I'm off crying in the background somewhere. Um, and this was almost a year ago exactly. Uh, she's now pregnant with my niece. So she's healthy and happy. Thank you.